Welcome to Funky Fridays with Bo. When I made that page, like I had like so many comments from like my friends and my family, like my cousins. They're like, "Oh, I can't believe you're doing this!" And like, <laughs> I sent an invitation to like all 300 of my friends, and like, you know, and that message was just like popping up, and I was like, "Wow, this is like so surreal." Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So, so as you know, Yumiko, this show is not only only looking at things that you can do on Friday nights but mm-hmm. also things which are close to your heart because usually, usually my podcast is all about Funky Fridays with Bo. So what you do yeah. on Friday nights and whatnot. But today, uh, before I do that, there will be the, the later part of the show. But right okay. now, it, it is something which is close to your heart. So mm-hmm. I have titled this uh, conversation, Ethical Fashion, Myth mm-hmm. or Future Trends. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so before we dig deeper into this topic for today, so mm-hmm. can you tell us more about yourself? So, yeah, I'm Yumiko and I was actually born in Singapore. My okay. mom is Singaporean, Eurasian, and my dad is Japanese. And then when I was a baby, we moved to Yokohama. So I grew up in Yokohama and then I was actually here um, for school for like some time in my high school and then I went to the UK and that's when I got to learn more about all the the eco fashion and sustainability because you know the UK is like they were really ahead you mm-hmm. know of the game so they they had a lot of like brands in like university shops and stuff like fair trade and ethical products and I also did an internship at Oxfam mm-hmm. and that's when I learned about sustainability especially in regards to like clothes or fashion mm-hmm. so where I was was in Leeds and right next to our town is this town called Bradford and they had like a like a recycling um like receiving facility right Mm -hmm. so the Oxfam shops what they do is they receive donation and then they sell them and that's how they make money right and um, the amount of clothes that we were receiving was just like so much that like we were like out of capacity like we have buckets like, like when I say buckets it's not just like a bucket like a container Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, like a shipping kind of bucket, like three buckets, like lining up. And then all these like ladies, like, you know, volunteers, they are on a conveyor belt and they are sorting the clothes, but they just can't catch up. And then one day I went to see the clothes and then some of them got like, you know, the tags, like people didn't wear them. And it's like nice stuff, like, you know, Topshop, River Island, okay. you know, so I was very conscious of like the, the waste within the industry, even before I became again this like a uh, brand but um after that i moved back to tokyo mm-hmm. and i was uh, working for this uh, also a british brand people tree and it's not just about like um sustainable fashion but they also did like fair trade and like all sorts of like ethical like household products and things like that and then i was put in charge um of like organic cotton like Mm t-shirts and you know that kind of stuff um and natural dye products and that's how i got into it and then um yeah 10 years ago i moved back here my family has always been in singapore so So, so you are voting this coming election no because i'm a japanese citizen <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, I'm hearing all the announcements and they're saying some really good stuff out there. So. <laughs> okay. So so you you have been exposed since young, since young uh, on on this uh, ethical oh, fashion, yeah. like, recycling and whatnot. Mhm. Okay. Like since my student time, I guess. But the thing about it, I mean, growing up in Japan, because they are very like appreciative of these kind of stuff, right? Yes, yes, I do agree. Um, you know, so <laughs> it's like part of like the school curriculum as well, like recycling. I actually remember when I was a kid uh, in primary school in Japan, right? Uh-huh. I was like in charge of like, because like, we collect like glass bottles and like cans and uh like bottles and then they had this like machine at the back of the school right where they had like a sorting facility and there's like a this like a compression machine where you can put cans Uh and then they make it into this like block of compressed cans yeah i know so like that was really um you know exciting for the kids like you have to rush there to be like the first one so that you can operate the machine because all the kids want to do that and like (laughs) 
you know, and like, so you have to wear the gloves. And so, so they were like very hands on about it, like the Japanese, you know, the whole yeah. education system. And then when I was studying here as well for high school, I actually went to UWC. Mm -hmm. So UWC is like, um, they didn't like, I mean, maybe they do now, but at that time it wasn't so hands on, but like, it's really part of their curriculum as well. Like they had a lot of like social activities and stuff like beach cleanups and like, you know, like a lot of chance to know about the environmental issues and like things like that. There's like a whole environmental week where you're supposed to come up with your own project and like do stuff. So yeah, I guess, yeah. And then in the UK as well, I had the opportunity. So I guess, yeah, I was a lot more exposed. Yeah. But yeah. you know, when I first started Etrican, mm -hmm. we collaborated a lot with like government bodies like NEA and like the local CCs. Mm -hmm. And what I remember way in the beginning, like, um, like NEA, they had like these like road shows and like at the CC and stuff. And I think I was like invited a few times to set up shop because it was like the part of the three R's. Ah, reuse, recycle, and what's reduce. the other one? Reduce. Reduce, yeah. reuse recycle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Yep. Mm. Uh, okay, I, I had a chance to actually um, surf the net and read about your website, etrican.com. Oh. It's called, yes. it's spelled E P R I C A N. Yes. Com. So, out there, those of you out there who wants to just uh, check, it, check Yumiko out, uh, <laughs> her website <laughs> is there. So, I saw this yeah. tagline in your website change is simple, you have yeah. a voice, now you can make a difference. So mm -hmm, can you tell yeah. us more about you, about your brand, how Etrican started and yeah. why Etrican and why this tagline? Mm, oh, there's so, a lot of yeah. questions in one. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot, but I'm sure we can cover it. But uh, yeah, I first, well, the thing about it is like, you know, I felt like moving back to Singapore and while I was um, learning a lot in Japan about sustainability, um, I saw that, you know, there are no other brands like this at that time in Singapore 10 years ago. And I remember like sort of um, coming back here for like Christmas and stuff and kind of sort of talking to my friends and like, you know, see if there's like any interest. And like, my friends are like, no, don't, don't, don't start now because Singaporeans, they won't get it. Like they won't know, you know, it's like come back in like three or four years then you can start it. And then like <laughs> my other co-founder Dragos and I were like, well, if we don't start it now, then we won't be the first ones. So, you know, like the fact that we can say that we are pioneers of eco fashion is that really when we got here and started this brand, there was no other brands that were doing the kind of things that we were doing, mm -hmm. you know, and then the, the tagline. So, I mean, pioneers of eco fashion is kind of what came about when we were kind of launching the brand and like a lot of local medias when they picked up on us, like, mm -hmm. you know, they... Um, I think somebody quoted us like like on that and that's how we adopted okay. that and then change is simple is also something that we came up um, somewhere along like you know a few years later um, when people were kind of interested in it and they wanted to be eco they wanted to be sustainable and then they will see me and they're like oh like are you wearing your clothes today and I'm like no because <laughs> It wouldn't make sense for me to like wear Etrican stuff like all the time. I mean, part of the reason that I started this is that I enjoy fashion, right? Okay. So like I wear like other like sustainable brands as well. And like, you know, so it's like, I am not like I'm advertising <laughs> a board like for Etrican only. Like I, I enjoy wearing other clothes as well. So, but I think that's the whole thing. Like when people try to get into it, like mm -hmm. the eco sustainability, they think that it has to be like 100% and like you have to like totally like you know commit and like zero waste and all that kind of stuff and I, I get it as well but also you don't want to stress yourself with that you know it's something more simple you know mm -hmm. and uh, we've also said that like why we should always like um, think about what we're gonna buy is that it's like your money with your money you're casting a vote you know mm -hmm. so when you buy like a sustainable more equal option then what you're saying as a consumer is that you support that, you know, you want to be good to the earth and you support this kind of movement. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that is yeah. how this whole tagline came about. Right. We want I, people to think of it as something really simple, like not overthinking, you know? Yeah. yeah. I guess for, for change to happen, it, it needs a, a, a bit of step, a baby step to happen. So I believe yeah. to make it simple is the best. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. And then, you know, something like buying a t-shirt, then you could make a difference. And then if that becomes your habit, and if you start always like sort of looking for other options, like more eco or sustainable options, then mm -hmm. you know, that becomes part of your lifestyle. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this, this concept of uh, ethical fashion, it is actually sounded very new to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 can can you, uh, you, you have mentioned it because of your ed education, your background uh, mm. as a Japanese when you were, you know, when you were young. Mm. This w w was that the main reason that you want to dabble in this category of fashion because the yeah. the fashion there's a lot of, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's white spectrum, spectrum mm. white. So why eco fashion? Yeah, I think, well, the progression of it, I think, for me, happened quite naturally. But like you said, because of the whole education, like, I was sort of leaning um, towards, like, that sort of, like, social change and sustainability. I've always been interested in that. Um, and, you know, like, the, 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 the fact that I've landed an internship at Oxfam, is, and then after that, to start working at People Tree as well. So it's, like, a very natural progression for me right but i didn't really know much about like sustainable fashion until i started working for people tree because at oxfam i knew that there was like a lot of waste and like you know a, a lot of like all these like brand new clothes that people buy that are not being worn and that kind of stuff but it wasn't on like a material level mm -hmm. and uh, being uh, in charge of the organic cotton production facility was that like I mean as part of the, the 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 work I had to do my own research as well and then like read up on uh, um, cotton farming right so I remember I came across this um, article by BBC and then uh, it talked about like these um, cotton farmers in India like not the big uh, conglomerate, but like the small time farmers in India and how they were struggling because um, when you buy like the cotton seeds, you also have to buy the pesticides together. And then like they can't afford it. So they have to like get a loan. And then they had like difficulty paying back the loans. So there was this like social problem of like um, farmer suicides, like suicide rates were like going up and that kind of sure. stuff. So yeah, so like this kind of fashion problems, like sustainability problems, it kind of uh, is tied into like other social problems it's not just like environmental problems but it kind of boils down to like you, you know like the society and like how people work and things like that and i think that's the side of um uh fashion that really doesn't um get any spotlight because i guess when we talk about like sustainability and like pollution and stuff maybe people imagine like cars or like you know carbon footprint and mm -hmm. like flights and things like that but like there was a lot a lot of things were like um, not regulated mm -hmm. as well, right? So I remember when I first went to India, like, um, and then somebody like showed me like, a, you know, the, the, the print t-shirts, like you have the print, right? Mm -hmm. Your logo or whatever. So yeah. it was like a printing, like a silk screen printing facility. And when I went there, like people were just like, after they did the, the printing, they would just throw the dye, like in the, in the, in the river in the back river okay. yeah like the long kang right <laughs> and then you see like the colors are all like orange and green and it's like oh. you know and that was like india like maybe 10 15 years ago and i think there it's like better regulated because there's like a lot of pushback and stuff like that but you know at that time like they were like telling me like because like our material is got certified so it's a uh, got stands for global organic textile standards mm -hmm. so even with the silk screen printing like they don't dispose the dye they keep it in like a bucket okay. and then weekly like the recycling people will come and collect it and it's like disposed in a safe manner um but you know there was like a, a long history of it like and sort of making it more like structured so that like I think Indian government as well like they made it so that it's not um, you know there's some sort of mechanism to make it like um, more sustainable and like you know and lessen the pollution and all that kind of stuff so but yeah just you know that that's what I saw like 10-15 years back so you can you can see like yeah. the kind of dialogue that was that we should be having but mm -hmm. it was not exposed like the yeah. fashion industry you don't really see that Okay, so mm. so for this uh this uh the materials or the GOT certified uh, textile mm -hmm. which you have got, mm -hmm. 
So is this a specific fa- factory that uh, you engage or does hmm. the, 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 the factory itself uh, produce uh, for everyone uh, mm-hmm. uh, like GOT uh, certified material? Yeah, so yeah, you can read up about the GOTS certificate on our website as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like a tab, I think, um, and it has like really good infographics on it. Um, and we, so we have a small network of like very um, small factories that we work with. Um, mm-hmm. And they are sort of all over India. Okay. And uh, they themselves, so like the certification body, this GOTS, um, I think they're like German and Dutch. Um, and it's like an annual um, certification. So they have to um, sort of apply for it every year. And what I really like about this uh, GOTS is that they do unannounced visits, you know? Because <laughs> if you schedule a visit, like you can all like make it look nice and neat, uh, but uh, they, they do unannounced visits as well. So, so it's like uh, an audit check. <laughs> Yeah, kind so, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, so, so do, do you do you do that? Do you do that to the? Oh factory? no 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 no! God's people <laughs> are like very like professional. Like they've been like you know auditing professionals. So like I'm not. But like yeah, the the factories are responsible for renewing the certificates, and uh, they do it every year. And then some other um, eco certification, like maybe they don't have to renew for like three or five years, and you know a lot could happen in that time. So I think this whole like you know, when once every year they have to renew it. I think it's a pretty good system. Yeah. Yep. Mm. And um, yeah, Yumiko, you are Etrican's principal designer. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. it's okay. Can you tell us more uh, what are the inspirations or the, or the uh, design that you like uh, from all the, uh, you know, the, 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 the t-shirt, the materials that you produce. So, so which one is mm. uh, you like best and, um, what uh, inspired you, you know, uh, yeah, to design yeah. this? Yeah, so, I mean, over the years, I, I think, um, uh, you know, it changes, like, what's in trend as well, and, like, um, what I feel as a de- designer to, like, sort of, um, you know, put the message or the, the translate the trend, basically, and make it into products. Um, but I think you can say that I've always been, um, yeah, um, it's quite nature oriented, right? So in the beginning, we had um, these designs that were like um, birds, like bird cage, like related to like birds and the feather print. Like we had like a really good, um, a couple of designs that like we um remade like <laughs> because mm-hmm. uh, it sold out a couple of times oh, wow. and oh. that was to do with like feather prints and like yeah like um and you know uh, we did this collection with like flowers as well um that was like my uh uh watercolor painting and okay. uh, you know petals and things like that so so it's always um we've always been like quite focused on um nature Mm-hmm. And in regards to um, fabrics, I mean, we always work with like organic cotton jersey fabrics. So it's like t-shirt materials. But there was also like a collection that we did on like woven fabric. And that was like really fun because, you know, wow. you can make like shirts. And like, I think we made like quite structured like skirts and shorts and like a, a jacket as well, like a half sleeve um, wow. jacket. And that was like really fun but uh, it's like different minimums and stuff like that so like you know you can't uh, do that stuff like too often but uh, it was really cool and then recently um because last year we were at um, or the last couple of years we were at the the green collective uh-huh. uh, yeah and then so like I just sort of designed this like limited um edition kind of like a t-shirt for like endangered species so mm. I actually do have the design with me okay can you show us? Wow, that's that's a pangolin. Yeah, so this is pangolin. Um, it says endangered on the top, and then at the bottom it says Singapore's pangolin. And then like um, one auntie was shopping, and then she was saying like, "Oh, I like this because it says Singapore." <laughs> and then, like she bought two of them. <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think yeah, it's you know, but that's the thing about like being a local brand. Mm. is that you can like play with this kind of stuff yeah and i designed the the pangolin um and this is like a you know like picasso he has like a one stroke drawing Mm -hmm. so you put down the pen and you don't lift it wow so So all these lines are like 
you know, and continuous lines. I remember lines. like where it starts, but I think it starts around here and then it just like goes wow. all so, so around. Nice, nice. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I never lifted the pen. And uh, so this is one. And then um, in the same manner, we have this, um, the Sumatran Rhino. Wow, nice. I yeah, like so that. I is, like that. Yeah. It, does it come in man's size? Oh, yeah, yeah. This uh, is like unisex. So okay. Like, I think uh, we even have kid sizes, like okay. 140. Let me let me check out your website and I could just yeah. get a yeah, couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Okay. And we're like updating the website as well. So mm. a lot more stuff will be available soon. So. Okay. So, so, so is this your current favorite or, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely they are my current favorite because um, it's just nice to do something that is unisex because it's for everyone. Mm. And, you know, when we first started this brand, I, I've always said that I wanted to make like sustainability or eco-fashion available for everyone because I think there's this idea that if you're like eco-fashion or organic, it's going to be expensive. Mm. Um, or, you know, it's something that's like far out of reach, but I just wanted to make it really accessible. And then like, while I was at the shop as well, like there are all these like different people, you know, it could be like aunties or like uncles, or it could be like really like young guys be like, Oh, do you have this in like another color or like this size and all that kind of stuff. And it's really nice to get like feedback from like different range of people. So at the, at the moment, what you are doing is more online. Do you, do you have like a, like a yeah, physical more- shop? online so like um unfortunately or maybe fortunately because of this like whole covid thing you know we like uh we had like a few physical stores that we used to um stock our products but uh we are doing online now and that's Mm. why we are like revamping our website as well to make it more like not just like the website but like mobile friendly and that kind of stuff Mm. and i think you know a lot of like retailers right now they are sort of shifting online right yes that's right uh, yeah because like we are such small company and it's just like two co-founders and like some part-timers so it takes time for us to do things but but yeah uh, yeah, we're hoping to shift uh to yeah online and like you know offer more products online because initially it's just it was just like um women's stuff uh mm-hmm. but now like we have babies as well okay, and then that's great. sex yeah and then uh we're also because like the indian uh, factories they have reopened they also ah. went through like the lockdown but like they had reopened so now they are making masks for us wow yeah nice so we should be having some organic cotton masks and that's good because actually like some of the synthetic materials i get like acne and you know, uh, yes, so i'm looking right. forward to that like, yes, yes. Myself, I, 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 I will also look forward to it. does it yeah? come in men's uh you know yes. patterns yes. <laughs> yes so we're doing like men uh women and kids like teenager and kid sizes so okay. you, know, you could be our tester I can wow. send you great you great great wear it and then let me know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Yumiko, you know this, uh, the fashion industry, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like you, you earlier you said about the carbon footprint. They, yeah. they really ex- actually uh, sort of accounted for quite a lot, about 8 to 10% of man-made CO2 emissions. Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. is kind of worrying as it's, it's more than aviation and shipping combined. You know, wow. <laughs> I, I'll check that. So, so do you think with this novel idea of ethical fashion will help reduce this carbon footprint footprint or carbon emission and what is the future moving forward uh, and do you think the popular fashion labels would ever be converted mm, yeah good question <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know it kind of ties into what i was saying before that like although fashion industry is like one of the biggest polluters it's not often you know talked about right yeah and by having this brand for 10 years i think uh you know we've maybe through talks and like just people buying our products and getting to know our products maybe we've uh given that opportunity for people to be aware of these kind of issues and Mm -hmm. then maybe you know they start learning about it and you know it's like some sort of talking point um and you know for us because we are a small brand Mm -hmm. i don't really um it's I, I really hope that we can make an impact, you know, 
But okay. I also think that it has to be like a collective effort approach, right? Yeah. So, you know, like if people are aware about what's happening, like by getting to know us and our products, that's really good as well. But I think, you know, in a, some things have to happen in a more of like a bigger sense. And, you know, we are here to make a presence, right? So, you know, it has to happen in like some sort of like government level as well, like structure levels and like the big labels as well. And a lot of the times when I do like these like talks and like do panel discussions and things like that, like sometimes, you know, when you ask um, questions from the audience, like a lot of the young students, you know, they're like, what do you think about all these like fast fashion brands and like you know like they're not like being responsible and blah blah, blah. and I was like well it kind of works both ways because you know when H&M they came out with their conscious collection mm, I actually yeah. own a few from their conscious collection um, it gave us like it, it was good for us in a, in a way as well because um, you know when we do like those like uh, events and like pop-up shops and stuff i kind of noticed that after h&m started their conscious collection we didn't have to explain so much like <laughs> people will look at our signs and be like oh it's organic it's sustainable like they know what it is and i think that's because you know they kind of had the opportunity to educate themselves like h&m i remember they had this like huge bag that says conscious collection and they put all the like organic cotton means this, recycled material means this, and like, you know, modal means this, and they, they did this whole bag and like, so, you know, there's something that we kind of like, you know, they may have the power to tip the scale in a bigger way, right? Mm, yep. So I think small brands and big brands go in hand as well. And then, you know, all these like bigger organizations and governments, there are things that they could do as well. And um, yeah, hopefully like, you know, change will be institutionalized. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I do hope so. But uh, I, I actually, uh, because also of this, uh, even the, the, I think about two, three months ago about Greta Tan Thunberg, she, she, she oh, yeah, yeah. mentioned a lot of stuff. So I, I believe yes. a lot of people are now more aware of uh, such things, mm -hmm. climate change and whatnot. So I, I hope we will, we will reach there one day. <laughs> Yeah, like you were saying, it's baby steps, you know, like, yes, like we yes. can't like change the entire system. But I mean, reflecting back, like just from 10 years ago, like up until now, there's mm. just so much progress being made. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let, let's hope for the better. Yes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so I, I, I've also checked out in 2018, you won uh -huh. an award, the Finders oh, Expertpreneur uh -huh. of the Year. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, yeah. belated Thank congratulations. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, 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 any any word of advice for future entrepreneur like yourself, if they wish to dabble into ethical fashion, or what should they look mm -hmm. out for? And uh, mm -hmm. is Singapore even ready? We are taking baby steps, right? Like yes. you mentioned before, yeah. So yes. hopefully, Singapore will be ready in time. So, yes. you, your take on that? Yeah. So you know, as I was saying when I first you know, thought about this brand and starting, a lot of my friends said that it was too early, right? Nobody will get it. But if you have a good idea, then you should start then so that you can say that you were a pioneer or something. You know? yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, at the same time, like sometimes when I do talks, um, some people will come and ask me like for advice if they were going to start out. And I always say like, long and thin like think long and thin because like singapore is like a mono season country right we don't have that many seasons so there's no point of coming out with like 40 collections a year you know <laughs> but i've seen i've seen like i don't want to like you know but like i've seen i don't want to be specific but i've seen some brands like on haji lane or something they have a huge opening it looks really grand and then like one or two years later they're gone because they exhaust themselves coming up with all these like different collections and like doing so much and like, um, you know, so like it's good to have a vision, but you also have to think about the, the, the long term, you know, so long and thin. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> right. That's, 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 that's a good advice because I yeah. believe sometimes uh, we, we are too excited to, yeah. to, to produce a lot of stuff. So everything mm -hmm. go one whole shot. And then mm -hmm. after that, we exhaust ourselves. So I believe yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's a good advice. Long mm -hmm. and what, what do you say again? Long and thin. Long so and like thin. thin. Meaning like, you know, small collections. You don't have to like come up with like, you know, like under outfits, like in a month. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so um, as for yourself, Yumiko, you are an entrepreneur. So what is your motivation and what is success is like for you? The motivation, I think um, for me, it's just, it was something that I really believed in, like inherently, you know? And then like you said, like maybe it was because of like my upbringing and like education, like in Japan and elsewhere but i think i was able to do this because i really believed in it you know and it's not like um like i wanted to like change the world 180 degrees but it's just that i i believe that there will be some uh who will appreciate what i'm doing and um you know so i think um that's what motivates me as well so every little feedback you know that I receive and that's why I like actually like being in all these shops that we stock our products and things like that or like even just hearing it from you you know and uh, because it's like yeah these designs are like my babies <laughs> and yes, yes. So every feedback uh, good and bad is like my motivation and I think success is just like sort of um, seeing people happy like seeing people customers happy with the designs and they get to know that they are doing something good like I, I get a lot of feedback like that um from like the younger you know customers and stuff that they like the fact that they are making an impact right and then I mean that's like in Singapore but like in India as well it's about like the workers at the factory and like you know there um there's this thing called fashion revolution it's like a event at the end of April every year mm -hmm. and uh it's about the uh, sort of like bringing awareness to like you know the ethical fashion and like uh, ethical working environment for like fashion garment workers right mm -hmm. so um there's like a singapore chapter and then we always like um have these like photos of like uh, workers like holding the signs that say i made your clothes and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah and actually at the funan as well at the the green collective we had like a photo of that like in a frame like just on display because like there was this like Indian girl with this like huge smile and she was like holding the card and like you know it's that kind of stuff so just you know seeing people happy like in Singapore and also you know the people who are making the clothes in India mm. yeah okay mm. so so this, this would be the last question mm -hmm. um, for you so ultimately this show is called Funky Friday with Bo so yeah. It features uh, things which goes around the, around the world before the weekend. Mm -hmm. So as usual, I will share with uh, the listeners uh, tips and recommendations of what they can do on a Friday night or plan something for the weekend ahead. Mm -hmm. you know? So for you, can you give us at least three tips or recommendations of how you usually spend your Friday night? <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> three tips. Uh, three tips or anything, anything that you... Yeah, you, yeah, no, I, it's good, it's good. Uh, Friday is usually like, for me, it's like the end of the week. So that's when like I connect with my family and friends and we usually, it's very chill on Friday. Um, mm -hmm. Just because like some of my friends like they work so hard that they just have no energy so they're just like oh can we just like hang out at your place and like we just like you know but um but yeah i think it's good because friday is just before the weekend so it's time to wind down and like catch up with your friends and sort of take that breather and stuff because on saturday or sunday maybe you want to do like a bit more of like a physical activity and stuff and then you know as an entrepreneur as well and as something as like a personal journey um you know i'm like practicing a bit of like mindfulness as well so it's good to like wind down you know to turn off so you know from monday to like friday it was like quite hectic so maybe like friday evening like you can you know spend time with your loved ones and just like start to chill um you know just like wind down relax so that you can sleep well on a friday night and start like fresh <laughs> enjoy the weekend on saturday and sunday and another okay. thing is that uh since this uh, whole lockdown, you know, people are being stuck in the house and stuff, and I'm no different. And I had to, I had <laughs> to, I had to find too. something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then you have to find something to make yourself busy. And, you know, like a lot of people are like catching up on like Netflix and things like that. And I've done that too, but I actually found something. Oh, I actually found that? something that I got really into. Wow, is and that 
crochet, crochet or, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got like really into that. So like you know, like now I have like all this like different like. Yeah, I'm like uh, the most loyal customer at Spotlight now. Oh, Maybe okay. like you know your your friends or aunties might see me as Spotlight. <laughs> like, the you time, know you huh? can you can get something cheaper in Chinatown as well. You know at level two. I heard. Yes. <laughs> Please send me a link it, it, It's of called that some place. some dragon something. Yes, yes, you know? yes, 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 yes. Yep. Uh, yes, I can see. Send you the link. It's a, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's, I gotta, I gotta but go it's there, stuck yeah. in one corner, so even mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because, because I've been following my wife to go. Because my wife is yeah, also into exactly, into stitching right? and cross scrochet. Yeah. Oh really? Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So okay, so all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I believe uh, it sums up our conversation. Mm-hmm. So, thank you, Yumiko, for an interesting and engaging conversation for the past uh, 30, 40 minutes. So, mm-hmm. I really learned a lot uh, from this conversation and I believe the listeners out there or those who will be listening to my podcast because I will uh, package all this into a podcast so that they can listen it uh, yeah. when they are free about a thing or two about ethical fashion. And yeah. so, we have the answer. Yes. I, I I put a fourth of question, ethical fashion, myth okay. or future trends. So I yes. believe it will be a future trend. So it's not a myth because Yumiko is there. <laughs> I started it. <laughs> because we have the answer from, uh, you know, the co-founder of Atrican, which is a, a pioneer in eco fashion. So it is indeed a future trend. And I believe in hope and humanity, we should take baby step. And uh, so that we can reach the goal of a lesser carbon in, carbon em- emission from the fashion industry and yeah, we head towards true. a cleaner and healthier environment yeah i mean wouldn't that be nice that like you know if singapore is like greener or like cleaner and that you you can stop that you know and yeah. uh yeah so like the last advice actually for like singaporeans i think is to just think about it before you like you're clicking it or like before paying for something that you know is is that something that you really want to support and like you know maybe you want to have a look again to see that if there are any like sustainable options or alternatives like you know before you click that button to buy <laughs> yes yeah. that's right that's right yeah. so 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 all right let's let's make an effort and play our part because i i like the tagline change is simple mm-hmm. you have a voice now you can make a difference. Yes, let's make a difference. Thank yes, you make for a, having me. <laughs> thank you, Yumiko. Thank you so much for being in Funky Fridays with Bo. So thank you. we'll catch up soon. Yeah, it was really fun. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'll catch up soon. And I'll let you know when the masks are here. So you can yes, test I, it. Yes, I, I will test it. <laughs> okay, <great. laughs> Hopefully by then I will be able to go to work so I can just move, move on you know, yeah, around exactly. with that mask and you around. Know, organic will be really breathable. So <laughs> you'll be very comfortable out there. <laughs> okay. All Bye. right. Thanks, Yumiko. Thank you okay. so much. Chat Thanks. up with you again next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, next time. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Then head on over to iTunes and Spotify and leave us a five-star review and feedback. If you have any other questions, suggestions, or feedback, do head over right now to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Twitch to like, share, and get involved. Till then, enjoy the rest of the weekend and do catch the next episode of Funky Fridays with Bo next week.